Well, hello, everybody. I'm Herb Ebel, an Osteostrong Regional Director and Center Owner. And welcome to this nutritional talk with Dr. Becky Baer. Today's discussion is about how you can support your bone health with proper nutrition and supplementations. Before we start, we would like to ask everyone to stay on mute for video and audio. We'll address questions from the chat feature throughout the presentation and during the Q&A session. We also encourage you to reach out to your local OsteoStrong with follow-up questions and for a special offer from participating centers. You can find a center near you at www.osteostrong.me slash locations. The presentation is recording and we will provide a replay link for those of you that wish to watch it offline. Without further delay, let me introduce my friend, Dr. Becky Bear, a South Dakota chiropractor and OsteoStrong owner. Dr. Bear is passionate about wellness and has dedicated her life to helping people become their best self, strong, pain-free, and active. Dr. Becky, thank you for joining us, and please share with our audience how nutrition and supplementation can have a positive impact on bone health. Awesome. Thank you so much, Herb, for that um, amazing introduction. And as Herb said, I am um, owner of OsteoStrong here in Sioux Falls. And um, I had a chiropractic clinic and did um, uh, clinical practice for about 15 years before transitioning to um, opening up the OsteoStrong Center in Sioux Falls two years ago. One of my big passions um, when I was in clinical practice was nutritional counseling. And I also have my bachelor's degree in nutrition. And nutrition plays such an integral um, part of our overall wellness, but also with our bone health. And it's one of... Um, one area that we get just an incredible amount of questions and there's just a lot of overwhelm and confusion and so many options out there. So that's the purpose of today is to um, have an overview of bone health, the role of food and our diet and our overall wellness and in particular um, our bone health and then the role of supplementation. We're going to try and um, keep things simple today and provide some clarity and um, actionable tools to um, help you take this information and apply it and make some changes. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, so today's presentation, um, we, like I said already, we are going to um, cover why bone health matters so much to your overall health and wellness. We're gonna cover bone growth, development, and remodeling to give us kind of that um, foundational information um, as we delve into what it takes three key ingredients for optimal bone health. Um, physical stimulus, how our food and diet impacts our bone health and physical uh, well-being, and then also the role of supplementation. So why does our bone health matter so much? And I talk about this a lot, but it's because it's so incredibly important. Because nobody thinks about their bones, right? Unless we break something or end up with a diagnosis like osteopenia or osteoporosis, who thinks about their bones? It's probably one of the, the, the least thought about systems in the human body. But our skeletal system is actually one of the most critical systems in the body. And there's four primary reasons why. First and foremost, our physical health, our ability to move and be active is the secret sauce to maintaining health and vitality in all other systems of the body. When we're able to move and enjoy life, our heart health, digestion, brain health, Kidneys, liver, hormone balance, everything improves. And the opposite is true as well. When you kind of stop moving and start slowing down, other systems in the body start to become compromised. So physical health starts with the foundation of the body, our skeletal system. And secondly, the strength of our bone tissue determines the strength of everything that attaches to it. All of our muscles, ligaments, tendons, joint structures, in fact, our brain will never allow our muscles to become stronger than what our bones can handle. So as we age and naturally lose bone density, we have a harder time keeping our muscles and our joints strong as well. So I just want you to consider this. Um, I like analogies. It helps people kind of understand and apply um, concepts to their everyday life. So I would just want you to imagine your house and imagine the foundation of your house. If you have a really strong foundation, Everything is good, right? But if your house has a weak foundation or the basement starts to crumble or things kind of start to weaken, everything that's built on top of that house is compromised. Our bodies are built the exact same way. 
So as we age, we all naturally lose bone density. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, and that can lead to a weakening of our foundation. You can't build strong muscles, ligaments, tendons, and maintain healthy joint structures on a weak structure. So third, bone diseases such as osteoporosis are incre increasing at alarming rates. Today's statistics, one out of every two women and one out of every four men over the age of 50 are at risk for osteoporosis, low bone density, and will suffer a fracture. We are even seeing bone density issues and increased fracture rates in our youth. And then in addition to all of that, our bone tissue actually serves many vital functions in the body. It's so much more than just structure and support. In fact, there are seven primary functions of bone. Bones protect our internal organs. They provide frame and shape. They enable movement. Our bones act as a mineral reserve. Our bones produce blood cells, white blood cells for immune function and red blood cells for oxygen and nutrient um, uh, uh, delivery. Our bones um, have a vital role in hormone regulation and our bones actually help to detoxify the body as well. So as, as um, much neglect as we, uh, uh, our, our bone system is that we don't think about it, it's incredibly fascinating. So before I move on and start talking about optimal bone health um, and the role of food and nutrition and supplementation and all of that awesome stuff, I wanna to touch briefly on bone growth development and remodeling. Just so you have a better understanding of bone health in general, um, along with an overview of bone density changes as we age, that's gonna um, tie perfectly in with nutrition and supplementation. It's easy to think of our bone as just hard, lifeless um, tissue in our body. A bone is actually living, growing tissue that's constantly being formed and broken down. So our bones actually remodel themselves every seven to 10 years. That's really cool because of this process that we call remodeling, where cells called osteoclasts, which is this guy right here with the jackhammer, he's the guy that breaks down old bone and gets rid of it, um, and cells called osteoblasts, which are these guys right here, and these guys are our builders laying down new bone, new healthy bone tissue. The bones that you have right now are not the same bones you had seven or 10 years ago, and they're not the same bones you're gonna have in seven to 10 years from now. And that's really cool because it gives you the possibility of improving your bone health with the right building blocks and the right physical stimulus. In healthy bones, the osteoclast and osteoblast activity is balanced. We have one guy building new bone con consistently and one guy getting rid of old bone. But when this um, kind of remodeling becomes unbalanced, in other words, when the breaking down happens faster than the um, formation of new bone tissue, bones can lose density and they become thin and fragile. So let's talk briefly about how bone changes throughout our lives. So throughout childhood, the osteoblasts, our bone builders, are working really hard. And they're working a lot harder than our guys that are tearing down old bone, our osteoclasts. And there's a very steep acquisition of bone density until we reach peak bone mass at about the age of 30. So if you look here, I like these little graphics. We have two guys building new healthy bone tissue when we're young and just one guy getting rid of the old stuff, clearing out and make way for, for new healthy bone tissue. And then again, about the age of 30, peak bone mass. And the bone density, so the bone density you build as a child is incredibly important. Um, your physical activity and proper nutrition you, you end up building your bone bank, if you will. Once you reach peak bone mass at about the age of 30, ideally the remodeling process should be balanced and it should remain balanced for um, a decade or two. So we have one guy building brand new bone and one guy kind of getting rid of the old um, bone to make way for new. The osteoblasts and the osteoclasts are working at the same pace, they're in homeostasis. And then around the age of menopause for women, or about the age of 70 for men, um, because of the decrease in estrogen and the decrease in testosterone for men, the osteoblasts, our bone builders, typically don't keep up with the osteoclasts or the, uh, the cells that uh, break down old bone. And in fact, during the five years around menopause, um, women can actually lose as much as 25 to 30% of their bone mass. 
And men will continue to lose bone density at a steady but slower rate than women. But again, about the age of 70, um, the reduction in that testosterone um, can make their, their bone loss um, rapid as well. And this kind of remodeling process is happening to everyone. It's just the natural aging process that occurs. So having an understanding of how bone develops helps us understand how we can prevent bone loss, osteoporosis, and other challenges that come from a weakening skeletal structure. There are very important things that we can do to support our bone health throughout our lives, but as we get older, the key to keeping our bones strong is making sure our bone builders, our osteoblasts, are consistently triggered to stay active, keeping up with our osteoclasts. It's also vital that our bone builders are given the materials that they need, the nutrients they need, to lay down that new healthy bone tissue. So I just want to touch briefly here as well, because I think a lot of people um, kind of consider age-related things, age-related challenges um, as you know, issues with their joints and issues with their muscles. But bone loss has always kind of been considered silent. But since we now understand that our brain will never allow our muscles or other soft tissues to become stronger than your bones, than your skeletal structure, the muscles naturally become weaker as well. So if we look at this picture, on the left, you um, see this bone tissue here, healthy 30-year-old bone. And here's a picture of the inside of 50-year-old bone as it starts to get um, a little bit thinner, the holes are a little bit bigger. So you can kind of see it's less dense, it's weaker on the inside. And when the bones get weak, the muscles also get weak. So then here is kind of some um, age-related issues that we can better tie directly to a weakening skeletal structure. You know, back and joint pain, loss of flexibility, loss of joint motion and getting stiff, change in reaction time, not being able to stop a fall, change in posture, decreasing in balance, and just a general overall um, loss of strength. So let's check in with Herb. How's the chat doing? Any questions so far? Um, yeah, let's see, not quite through the chat yet. So just a reminder to everybody, there's a little uh, cartoon balloon in the bottom of your screen that you can click on and you can actually uh, submit a question through chat. So please uh, su submit your questions there. Please continue to stay on mute for audio and video if you would so we can get good uh, audio throughout the presentation. And then I do have a pre-submitted question that I think that would fit in this area here, Dr. Becky. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, somebody was uh, kind of wanting to understand a little bit better about uh, balance loss and how that's uh, correlated to bone health and why bone health is important if you're, you're noticing some balance loss. All right, so balance is actually a, a really interesting um, phenomenon in the body. And our human body wants to stay upright and prevent a loss. Um, it's probably one of the number one protective features in the body. So balance is so important. We actually have two systems in the human body that monitor and um, maintain our balance. We have balance that is maintained neurologically, so by our nervous system, and that's our brain and our, our spinal cord. So that's like your reflexes. So if you kind of trip over um, a crack in the sidewalk um, or over a rug in your, um, your kitchen, your nervous system instantaneously, reflexively, will try to rebalance you. But the other system in the human body that is responsible for balance is our musculoskeletal system. So our muscles, ligaments, tendons, and our skeletal structure. That's actually one of the biggest purposes of our um, joint structures. So as we age and you start to weaken and the muscles kind of start to become a little bit weaker, that balance system starts to become compromised. And so if we can reestablish healthy joints, gain some flexibility back and increase the strength, we naturally will just improve in our balance. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't associate with um, bone health in particular is balance and that's how it works. So great question. All right, so we're gonna move on. Three key ingredients to building bone, building optimal bone health. So now that we understand the importance of our bone health, bone development and remodeling, some signs and symptoms of weakening bones and muscles, let's turn our attention to what we can do about it. So what are our choices if we wanna actually build bone density and improve our overall physical health? 
three key ingredients. Physical activity and osteogenic loading is absolutely vital and number one way to stimulate our workers, our osteoblasts, to lay down and create healthy new bone tissue. Proper nutrition and choosing a healthy, balanced diet is critical to supporting those osteoblast guys um, in assisting them to do their job. They have to have their materials to be able to lay down that healthy new bone tissue as well. And then we're also gonna be discussing the role of supplementation in optimal bone health and just overall wellness. We're gonna learn without the proper physical stimulus to keep those osteoblast um, workers going. The body simply cannot build bone from raw materials and nutrients alone and vice versa. Just like construction, we have to have the workers and their materials show up to the job to build any kind of structure. So first up, exercise. Exercise for strong bones. What actually increases bone density? We know that weight bearing and high impact exercises are best when it comes to bone health. But what does it actually take to increase bone density? Is walking enough? Do I need to be running? Um, do I just need to be lifting some free weights at the gym or doing yoga? That's what we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna start with a little bit of science lesson and we're gonna go back about a century because we've known since about a century, over 100 years ago, based on what's called Wolf's Law, that your bones adapt to stressors or demands placed on them. Similar to muscle tissue when you lift weights. When you put pressure or a compressive force, you can see this video here, uh, so just imagine that's your thigh bone being compressed, your bone tissue responds by remodeling and becoming stronger, and it does this to protect you. A process called osteogenesis, or new bone growth, is stimulated. Our osteoblasts, our worker guys, are triggered to get to work and start laying down new bone tissue. Just like many processes in the body, our bone responds to the environment in which it's placed. So it would be no different than when your pupils dilate or constrict to protect you against light or dark, or when you shiver or sweat to protect yourself um, with temperature changes. Exact same concept, it's an adaptive response. So even though we've known about Wolf's Law for over a century, it actually wasn't until 2012 that a group of researchers discovered just how much force, how much compressive force it takes to stimulate osteogenesis at a pace large enough to outpace our bone loss. So building bone density, not just slowing it down. And what they discovered was really surprising. They found that it takes 4.2 multiples of body weight of force to stimulate osteogenesis in your hip joint. So if you weigh 150 pounds, that's a minimum of 630 pounds of pressure of consistent stimulus on that hip joint to build that bone density. So how in the world do we do this and do this safely? So what strengthens bone? Traditional exercise simply does not provide enough force. Walking and yoga and Pilates and stretching and balance exercises are all great forms of exercise and they help with different systems in the body, but they simply will not provide enough stimulus to the bone tissue to increase bone density. So if you look here on this chart, swimming and bicycling is zero multiples of body weight. Brisk walking is about one to two multiples of body weight. Running or jogging, we're getting up to about three multiples of body weight. And jumping exercises and strength training is where we start to get into that four plus multiples of body weight. So exercise like gymnastics and powerlifting um, are great for building bone density, but there's obviously a really high risk of injury. That's where this concept of osteogenic loading comes in. It's the technology that we use at OsteoStrong that allows us to safely reach those types of forces, often upwards of five to eight multiples of body weight, to stimulate osteogenesis naturally, to trigger those build, bone building cells to get to work while the, kind of minimizing the risk of injury. When you focus on strengthening the foundation of the body, your bones, everything else strengthens right along with them. Posture and balance begins to improve, you become more flexible and agile, you reduce back and joint pain, you're less prone to injury, you have more energy, you're overall physically stronger, 
And bone tissue, because of those additional seven functions, um, strengthening your bone tissue can also help with type 2 diabetes and A1C levels. So if you have type 2 diabetes, your A1C can also improve when you focus on the skeletal system. And that's what we do here at OsteoStrong all day, every day. Um, when you combine high impact forces and osteogenic loading with positive lifestyle changes, we're going to be talking about right now, amazing things happen to your overall health and wellness. So before we move on and start diving into nutrition, let's talk with Herb. How's the chat doing? Anybody putting some questions in there yet? Hi, Becky. Thank you. I'll just remind everybody that you may have to hoover down to the kind of the bottom of your screen to get that little balloon type window that comes up. You can click on to add a chat or a question. I did have one that was asking uh, about your recap on, on the multiples of body weight. That was a very good slide you had there and helped out quite a bit, but they were yeah. interested in like, how's it different than weightlifting and what, what makes osteostrong different than, you know, walking or weightlifting or, you know, other ways to load your body? Oh, sure. So basically weightlifting, unless you're like a power lifter, lifting multiples of body weight. So we know now it's multiples of your body weight. So lifting five or 10 you know, pound free weights is great for muscle tone and it's also can help with flexibility, but it is simply not, you know, where it's five to 10 pounds, that's, that's a fraction of your body weight. So it's not gonna have that compressive stimulus that we need on the bone tissue to be able to stimulate that osteogenic um, activity, that new bone growth. And OsteoStrong is, is different primarily because the system that we use for osteogenic loading is basically a series of four machines. And each machine targets a different region of the body. So there's a lower body, an upper body, a core machine, and a postural machine is what we call it. And by the time you've gone through the system, you've loaded with multiples of your body weight, all 206 bones of the body. But the beautiful part, the reason it's so incredibly safe, first and foremost, you're always taken through with a coach. So there's a set of eyes on you to make sure that you're in the right form, but you're actually totally in control um, the whole time. And you're also put into your um, very specifically a uh, strongest range of motion position but it's also the safest position for that region of your body to absorb a force. So the difference between just traditional exercise and weight bearing, unless you are a power lifter and you are doing um, you know, multiples of your body weight, you know, you're squatting four or five, 600 pounds, um, which there are people who are capable of doing that, um, traditional weightlifting and traditional exercise just doesn't get you there. It just doesn't get you to those loads. So that's the difference. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. So there was one person that had just asked about their speaker. Um, just want to remind folks, if you're having any trouble with audio, go kind of to your left or right in your bottom of your tray. If you're on a PC or Mac, there should be a little thing where you can click on your speaker and you can make sure that you're not connected to Bluetooth um, or that you're connected to the sound that you want to come out of your PC. Um, also, um, if you're on a phone, just be careful you're not collected to Bluetooth. If you're not getting sound, you might need to just put in your Bluetooth headset. But uh, let's go on and I'll keep looking for questions. All right, sounds good. So I think probably what everybody is um, here to learn more about, food and nutrition, and um, it's the next key ingredient to optimize our bone health and overall wellness, our food. So one of the biggest culprits of poor health today, guys, is that we simply just don't eat enough quality food. And what we are eating is causing a significant amount of inflammation, stress, and just kind of dis-ease in the body. And this is a true passion of mine. Um, so I can, I can go really in depth with this. So I'm gonna try and keep it um, simple and uh, not get overly uh, passionate. So, but I just want you, we're just gonna cover this. Um, the human body is just, a truly miraculous machine. It's capable of incredible feats of strength, intelligence, memory, learning, regeneration, balance, our heartbeats, you know, all on its own, and oxygen and all of that good stuff. The list just goes on and on. But it does require clean and constant building blocks, clean and constant fuel, in our case, food, in the form of proteins, carbohydrates, good fats, vitamins, and minerals, to be readily ingested. And if not, we start to break down and our foundation starts to break down, the foundation of our body. 
just like in a vehicle, if you put bad fuel in it or use bad oil, the foundation, the frame will start to break down. And while food intake and nutrition are incredibly intricate and complex and very individualized, we're gonna try and keep it as simple. I love the KISS analogy, keep it simple, silly. So we're just gonna review the role of food in general for our health. We're gonna take a common sense approach. And there's really only two primary purposes of our food. There's only two. Purpose number one is our food provides us energy and nourishment to all of our one trillion cells. Purpose number two is our food supports detoxification and regeneration of these same cells. So leading from that and the two purposes of our food, there are five main food groups that we can pick from to feed ourselves. But these foods that we consume, their sole job is to work to support those two purposes. So let's break down these five main food groups into those two specific categories. We have our meats, nuts, and seeds, grains, dairy, fruits, and vegetables, and which ones support which processes. So purpose number one is energy and nourishment. Energy and nourishment primarily comes from our proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, which we collectively call macronutrients. They're primarily found in our meats, nuts, and seeds, and our grains and our dairy. Your body needs these nutrients in much larger amounts in order to function properly, so that's what the word macro means. So our proteins, carbohydrates, and fats are our macronutrients, and they're primarily given to us, sorry guys, um, from the first three food groups, meats, nuts, seeds, grains, and dairy. And in addition, all of these nutrients provide your body with energy measured in the form of calories. And we all know that word. So most of our calories come from these three food groups. They provide nourishment for building and maintaining structure, and they provide calories that our body can then convert into energy. So our macronutrients, again, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and we get them through eating meats, nuts, seeds, grains, and dairy. So I kind of kept that very, very simple, but I just provide this slide um, as an overview that while it's primarily energy and nourishment, there's always an overlap in all of our macronutrients and our micronutrients coming up. So our, our carbohydrates, our fats, and our, and our uh, proteins all serve those two vital functions, but they also have several other purposes in the body. So that's just informative. Function number two of our food is to support detoxification and regeneration. And that's the job of our vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, collectively called our micronutrients. They're primarily found in our fruits and veggies, and your body needs these nutrients in much smaller amounts in order to function properly, just as the word micro, micro means. So that's where the word micronutrients comes from. They're just as important arguably even more important, just smaller quantities. So micronutrients are one of the main groups of nutrients that your body needs. They are necessary to support detoxification, regeneration, immune function, blood clotting, cellular regeneration, growth, bone health, fluid balance, hormone production, and virtually every other process in the body. So again, our micronutrients are our vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants collectively, um, and they're only uh, obtained through our food, primarily plants, which are, which are our fruits and veggies. And again, this slide, um, while it's detoxification and regeneration, our vitamins and minerals are also responsible for several other functions in the body. So simply um, knowing detoxification and regeneration, but just an appreciation of um, everything else that uh, serves from our vitamins and minerals. So as you can see, fruits and veggies are not just good for us. They're absolutely vital for normal detoxification and regeneration, virtually functioning of every cell in our body, including our bone tissue. So how do we put this all together? Putting it all together in what I like to call kind of your orchestra of nutrients. And this is, how do I feed myself every day? So that's how we translate this. There's four building blocks to optimal bone health and quite frankly, well-being. What's good for our bones is good for our entire body. 
We focus on the foundation, everything else benefits. So four building blocks, we need comprehensive vitamins, minerals, good fats every day, and protein. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So those are the four building blocks and we're gonna dive deeper into each one of them. So number one and number two collectively are micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. We need a full spectrum of all of our vitamins and minerals every day. And we collectively get those out of our diet, primarily through our fruits and veggies. And ideally every single day, we would get seven to nine servings of vegetables and three to five servings of fruit every day. Um, that depending on health challenges or dietary challenges um, or your health status and how well the body assimilates um, or absorbs its nutrients, there's a little bit of wiggle room in that, but ideally seven to nine veggies, three to five fruits, preferably seasonal. So there's a reason that certain fruits and veggies grow during winter months and um, uh, fall months and summer months and spring months. And it's because um, of the nutrient density that's found in those specific vegetables. So just a classic example, um, excuse me, would be selenium is found in higher amounts in our root vegetables, which are typically our fall and winter veggies. And selenium helps detoxify the body and supports immune function. So in the winter months, when our immune system kind of is down, um, that's, that's, that's the reason that we have seasonal veggies and seasonal fruits. And then we can also obtain our fruits or our vitamins and minerals through supplementation. Building block number three on your plate is good fats, essential fatty acids. And so fat does not make you fat, guys. Um, I just wanna clear that up. Fat is actually an excellent source of energy. Good fat will not make you fat and good fat also does not compromise your health. So there's two types of fats that we can consume in our diet. And we wanna increase our good fats, also known as our omega-3 fatty acids. They're highly anti-inflammatory. Um, so they help reduce inflammation, they help reduce um, joint pain and that kind of stuff. We find that in our fish, butter, ghee, which is just clarified butter, coconut oil, eggs, and yes, with the yolks. Um, I think that's kind of hopefully been debunked for most people. Egg yolks got a really bad rap um, for a long time because of increasing cholesterol and it just simply, it just simply isn't true. Eggs with the yolks are an incredible source um, of omega-3 fatty acids, and they're also a great source of protein. Lard and chocolate. So good news, chocolate, but it's dark only. Um, no milk chocolate. We don't want any of that processed stuff, but dark chocolate is um, an amazing source of omega-3 fatty acids. It's also chock full of antioxidants. So that's the places you can get them in your diet, and then you can also supplement with a fish oil um, or EPA and DHA. It's very two very good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. We wanna decrease our consumption of omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fats are what we call bad fats. Those are the ones that will compromise your health and increase cholesterol and increase visceral fat. They're highly inflammatory, um, which is the root of most disease, most chronic disease in the human body. So eliminating the majority of these out of your diet on a daily basis is just a, a good idea overall, but especially for bone health. That includes vegetable oils, processed salad dressings, processed foods in general. Restaurants and fast foods typically have um, a significant concentration of omega-6 fatty acids. They taste good, which is why they're used in processed foods um, and restaurant food and fast food. Um, margarine and most baked goods as well. And building block number four on your plate, um, probably aside from fruits and veggies, probably the most important. I love talking about protein. Um, Protein is incredibly important for every system in the body, but nobody really thinks about protein when it comes to their bone health. But bone is actually 50% protein by volume. It's essential, protein is essential to maintaining the structure of all of our connective tissue, including bone. So it's essential for all of our muscles, all of our ligaments and tendons, but we have connective tissue that includes our skin as well. Um, our digestive tract is made up of connect connective tissue. Our heart and our blood vessels are connective tissue and they all require protein and bone is no except exception. Protein actually provides the house, if you will, um, the bony matrix. If you remember that picture of the bones earlier on, you can, it looks like a honeycomb inside of our bones and that's a protein matrix is what that's called. 
that protein matrix basically forms the house for calcium and magnesium and all of our bone building nutrients to rest in. So that's, that's where that, all the nutrients get deposited. So if you're not taking protein, you can't build your, your protein matrix in your bone. There's no place for the calcium and the nutrients to attach. How much do we need? So minimal amount of protein in grams per day is about half your body weight. So again, if you weigh 150 pounds, you need about 75 grams of protein minimally. Ideally, um, as long as you don't have compromised health, so people who have kidney disease, um, you need to visit with your healthcare provider, but ideally um, and optimally, you'd want about 70% of your body weight every day in protein. And I included this graph, protein content in common foods. So you can kind of see um, how much protein is in, you know, a, a typical you know, chicken breast or a typical egg or typical glass of milk, that kind of stuff. And you can kind of just gauge in your own kind of average day where you're at with your protein consumption. So putting it all together, this is a great visual. I love this food pyramid um, from Dr. Mark Hyman. So as you can see here, the four building blocks are the base of this triangle. The majority of your plate for bone healthy diet and nutrition, along with just healthy diet and nutrition, period. Lots of veggies on the bottom. Here's your healthy fats and your protein, fruit, and then your starchy veggies at the top. Everything else um, should be a treat. So any questions before I move on to supplementation? That was a lot, but I'm hoping that I, I kept it simple and brought some clarity, Herb. So. Yeah, thank you, Becky. You're doing great. I did have a question. It was about the protein. Someone okay. was asking, um, they thought it was mostly about the calcium or milk. Can you dive in just a little bit deeper when protein comes into play? Yes. Um, so I think that's part of the reason that um, I really brought it to light today. And that's one of the conversations, you know, when I was in clinical practice with my patients and then certainly um, with people that we work with now, that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that as long as I'm drinking my milk or taking my calcium supplements, I'm fine. And because we know that bone is 50% protein, if you're not consuming enough protein, and I think a lot of you will probably be surprised, if you start adding up your protein um, count, your protein intake on a daily basis, you're probably not there um, where you need to be. And so, you can absolutely consume calcium and you know, magnesium and phosphorus and potassium and all the bone building nutrients. But again, like I said, if there's no bony matrix, if there's no protein matrix inside that bone tissue for those minerals to attach to, or those new, the, the new bone cells to, to live essentially, there's nowhere for them to go. And so protein consumption is absolutely vital when it comes to bone health. It is for every system in the body. Um, protein serves so many functions, but as far as connective tissue, um, protein absolutely has to be number one, and it is. It is probably one of the most surprising things um, that people you know, don't realize. It's just a, a kind of chronic misconception out there. So great question. Okay, a couple more quick ones, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. uh, someone is asking about calcium and magnesium supplements. How much should we get? So we are going to be moving into that right now. So um, calcium and magnesium, we'll talk about that just baseline for kind of every human body and then people who might need to um, consume more of both of those and forms and how to get it and what should be combined and not combined. Perfect. Let's go there and then there's a few more questions, but I think I'll hold them until Q&A. Awesome. Perfect. So we're going to move on to the role of supplementation. And again, we're gonna try and keep this simple. Um, I've kind of um, discovered just a very, very easy approach to supplementation. And again, kind of common sense. The number one question, this is the third and the final key um, to optimize uh, bone health and overall wellness. The number one question is, do we need to supplement? And the short answer is yes. And I'll talk about three reasons why. But before we get into that, I just want to clarify that supplements are just that. They're meant to supplement a good diet, to bridge the gaps of what we're not getting or consuming on a regular basis. You cannot supplement your way to optimal health in any realm, whether it's bone health, heart health, brain health, digestive health. You cannot supplement your way to optimal health if you're eating food that's highly processed and inflammatory on a regular basis. 
So number one is those four building blocks. That's what your plate needs to look like the majority of the time through the day. And then we supplement to bridge that gap. So do we need to supplement? Yes, and here's why. Number one, everyone knows that eating a wide variety of health foods is crucial for good health. But in our busy lifestyles, it's very difficult to, re to eat you know, perfectly right all the time and get all of your nutrients. Those nine servings of veggies and those three to five servings of fruits, your micronutrients especially, every single day. It becomes very, very difficult to get everything you need. But avoiding or eliminating what's bad for you is just as important as consuming stuff that's good for you. So even though you might not be able to get your nine um, you know, veggies and nine servings of veggies and three to five servings of fruit, that doesn't mean that McDonald's is okay. Does that make sense? So it's very difficult to get what we need in every day, but it's not because we're eating stuff we shouldn't be. Number two, if you try to maintain a healthy diet, our modern food processing um, tends to rob our food of essential nutrients anymore. Our food is heavily processed by the time it actually hits our supermarkets. And just as an example, refined white flour contains less than a quarter of vitamin E and B6, magnesium and manganese. Um, and it's also devoid almost 100% of zinc by the time it actually is taken out of the field, our wheat processed and put onto our grocery store shelves. And number three, our modern lifestyle, stress, lack of sleep, exercise, and the environmental toxins that we're exposed to all deplete our micronutrients, especially the micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that act as antioxidants or those anti-aging um, uh, detoxification nutrients. So supplementation to optimize and restore those depleted micronutrients has become very important in this day and age in order for our bodies to function optimally, especially detoxification. So now that we know supplementation is important, what do we need to supplement? It's the next question. And this is where I take a very, very, very minimalist and common sense approach. I always like to say that we have to cover our bases, our basic building blocks, just like our diet, before we get fancy. So there is a million choices out there. Um, every grocery store, um, the big Walmarts, Targets, the health food stores have thousands of things to pick from and it's just incredibly overwhelming but we now know the two purposes of our food the four building blocks to an optimal daily diet we know that we need to supplement so let's just take a step back and say okay what do i need to supplement supplementation is meant to bridge the gap in our diet so we don't get fancy and, and say, we're gonna supplement with B12 because we, you know, and B12 only because we need energy. Or we're gonna supplement and take a vitamin C all on its own because we wanna have a healthy, strong immune system. Because that's not the way our food works, guys. So if we're gonna supplement, let's supplement with as food-like as we possibly can. So food comes with Many, many, many vitamins, minerals, proteins, fats, um, you know, carbohydrates. So we can't just go and pick in our garden um, a vitamin, you know, a B12 um, vegetable and eat that. Or just um, a, a, you know, a steak full of antioxidants. So the number one, number one thing that you need to be supplementing with before you start to look at anything else is a very good, very high quality, very well-formulated multivitamin that covers all the bases. It's just like it's just like swallowing food. It has all your, you know, a full spectrum of vitamins and minerals in it, antioxidants, hopefully a few other things added to it to, assim to help assimilate and digest and be absorbed through the gut. But a multivitamin is absolutely essential. The number two essential is an omega-3 fatty acid, only because, so fish oils, only because we live in such an inflammatory um, and highly stressed environment. So the two building blocks for supplementation, the two foundational supplements everybody needs to be taking, the very good multivitamin and a fish oil or an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. Beyond that, we do any kind of additional supplementing based on an individual's um, 
you know, basically an assessment of an individual. We will, you know, additionally supplement based on gaps, specific gaps in your diet. So you're just not a meat eater. You don't like protein. We might need to talk about getting you on a protein powder. Um, maybe you have celiac disease and you can't eat gluten and it's very restricted. We probably need to talk to you about supplementing in addition to a multivitamin and an omega-3. Um, specifically for bone health. If you have a diagnosis of osteopenia or osteoporosis, we need to talk to you about additional supplementation to support that bone health. Primarily, calcium, D3, and K2 over and above a multivitamin and an omega-3 fatty acid. But you can't just take a calcium because you, you have to bridge the gaps in your diet for that supplementation and for everything to build on its, on its own. And then we also will talk about supplementation for specific health challenges. So possibly, um, you know, we can talk about cinnamon and turmeric if you have um, type 2 diabetes or CoQ10 if you have high cholesterol and you take a statin. So we do accessory or targeted fancy supplements after we've found a good quality, well-formulated multivitamin and omega-3 fatty acid. So let's talk about nutrients specifically for bone health. So we now know that we have to be on a multivitamin and an omega-3 fatty acid foundational supplements. We're going to focus today, however, on for accessory supplementation um, for bone health to support um, bone building. So these are our building blocks after a multivitamin and an omega-3. The materials that must be present for your osteoblasts, your workers. Did you get a mute at her? Yes, I did. Thank you. Sorry about the interruption. No problem. Um, the materials that must be present for your osteoblasts, those worker guides, to use to build that strong foundation. So calcium and vitamin D are what we call the dynamic duo for bone health. Calcium is the mineral that makes your bones strong, and, cal and vitamin D is um, the vitamin that we have to have to get that calcium out of, out of the digestive tract and get it to absorb into the body. So the two go hand in hand. You can't um, efficiently break down and absorb calcium without vitamin D. The amounts that you're gonna need vary with age, but calcium specifically needs to be every single day. You need 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per day between your diet, which you're, what you're getting through your food, and supplementation. One of the big caveats with calcium though, and this is also a, usually a pretty big surprise to people, is that our body can only absorb about 500 to 600 milligrams at a time in any one sitting. So we talk with our members here quite a bit about calcium supplement and they're taking it every morning with their breakfast, but their breakfast is yogurt. And so they're already getting about seven to 900 you know, milligrams of calcium in that yogurt. And then they're taking a, a thousand to 1200 milligram calcium supplement and thinking that they're good and they're not because you're only going to absorb five to 600 milligrams, whether it's dietary or supplementation, at a time. So calcium supplements need to be taken away from all meals, all food, and your supplements, if you look at the store, you're gonna see calcium supplements everywhere that are dosed at 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per tablet. And you're only gonna absorb 50% of that at best. So your calcium supplement also only needs to be 500 to 600 milligrams um, in a single dose, and it needs to be taken away from food. You can also take too much um, or get too much. So you do need to kind of view your, your traditional diet, kind of keeping you know, a journal for a few days, seeing where you're at, because if you're consuming 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams of calcium every day, chances are you probably don't need to be supplementing with it. You just need to get that calcium that you're consuming into your bone tissue. Vitamin D every day as well, guys. Um, current standards right now is anywhere from 800 to 2,000 IUs a day. However, there's research um, continuously coming out about vitamin D because this is so vital for every system in the body, quite honestly. Um, but in the Northern Hemisphere, they're actually you know, possibly considering about 4,000 IUs a day as minimum dose. So right now, standard is 800 to 2,000 IUs a day. You can get your vitamin D um, levels checked at your medical doctor, and I encourage everybody to do that, to know if you need to be supplementing for sure. But one thing about vitamin D, we all know that vitamin D is produced um, in response to sunlight, but one thing that I think a lot of people um, aren't aware of is if you wear sunscreen, you don't produce vitamin D um, in the sunlight. 
So it's become a huge issue, especially for our kids, because if they spend a day outside at the park or they're you know, on the boat all day in the sunshine in the summertime, but they're covered in sunscreen, their body doesn't produce any vitamin D at all. That, that sunblock, that SPF blocks vitamin D production. And so the same thing with um, people my age and then people who are older, if your face cream um, or your moisturizer that you use every day has an SPF in it for, for skin protection, you aren't going to produce vitamin D on that, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if your face is exposed to the sun as well. So just know. Um, protein. We already talked about protein. 50% protein by volume is our bone. So just kind of, again, um, keep a running tab or a journal for the next few days and see how much on average that you're, that you're consuming. And then vitamin K2. Um, vitamin K2 is vitamin K2 is kind of like calcium's taxi. So if we visualize we eat our calcium, vitamin D comes along. Vitamin D um, is kind of like our, 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 our taxi or our railroad car that calcium gets put into. Vitamin D puts it into the bloodstream. Then K2 is our taxi driver. K2 takes that calcium out of our blood and deposits it into our bone tissue. So K2, our taxi driver, takes us from wandering the streets and delivers us to the address we need to go to. So that's one of the things I think a lot of people are scared to take calcium because they've heard that it's really bad for um, heart health and calcifies the arteries and that kind of stuff. And that is absolutely right. Vitamin K2 is vital if you're taking a calcium supplement because of bone health or diagnoses like osteoporosis you need to be taking K2 so that calcium doesn't stay in the bloodstream and get deposited into your blood vessels and actually gets deposited into the bone tissue. So, how do we pick supplements? Out of the thousands that are available out there, out of the 100 options for calcium, um, 100 options for multivitamins is a one a day perfectly fine, how do we pick? And, that's where what's called the ABCs, ABCS, of optimal supplementation comes in. And you guys are all gonna be getting the ABCS quiz um, emailed in your inbox with the replay of this. So you can take that um, and analyze what's in your cabinet or take it to the, the supermarket or the health food store with you and analyze before you do any kind of buying. So the four categories of a well-formulated supplement is what the ABCS, quiz allows us um, to assess. A stands for absorbability. It's first and foremost, if in the quiz, the first five or six questions are, are any one of them are a no, you don't even need to move on on the quiz. If you cannot absorb and break down your supplement, it's completely pointless um, what's actually in it. So B stands for beneficial quantities and forms. So if the, you know, form of vitamin or mineral that's um, in, or the form of omega-3 fatty acid that's in a supplement is not in a bioavailable form or is a synthetic form that the body can't identify and can't absorb, then it's a waste of money. CS stands for competitions and synergies. And I think calcium is um, probably the, the easiest for people to understand. So there are some vitamins and minerals that compete for um, absorption in the human body if they're taken together. And then there are some vitamins and minerals that need to be taken together. They have to be, they gotta go with their friends in order to be absorbed and utilized properly. So calcium um, needs to be taken with vitamin D in order for both of them to be um, absorbed and utilized um, efficiently. However, calcium and magnesium taken together compete. And that's shocking to most people because calcium and magnesium um, supplements combined are everywhere. But if you look at the label on that, you're gonna see massive doses over the RDA percentages of both. And it's because they compete, so they're not efficiently absorbed. So vitamin D and calcium are synergies, they're friends. Calcium and magnesium compete for absorption. So the ABCS quiz is gonna allow you to take all that information and simplify and be able to analyze what's in your cabinet or what's in the grocery store. And this next slide is the ABCS quiz. So you're gonna get this, it's a front and back. 
And again, you start with A, answer these questions. You just look at your label on whatever, whether it's a multivitamin or your omega-3 or your calcium supplement. And you start with first questions in the A category. If we get a check mark in the yes on all of them, perfect. Go on and look for beneficial quantities and forms. If all the beneficial quantities and forms are in there, perfect, that's awesome. Then we wanna make sure that there isn't stuff in there um, that shouldn't be, or there's all the stuff in there that should be to make sure that um, supplement is doing its job. This is gonna be emailed to all of you, so you'll be able to download that, print it out, or keep it on your phone so you have it with you when you get to the supermarket. There. And because of these ABCs, ABCS of supplementation, and to try to keep things simple, and as an incredibly awesome resource, especially for our members here at OsteoStrong, we carry um, a brand of Colton Nutrition. Colton Nutrition, every product they have meets the ABCS of supplementation. Um, their multivitamin, omega-3, calcium, D3, K2, and their protein are just um, incredibly uh, good, well-formulated, very high-quality um, supplements. This ensures that our members can avoid the overwhelm, that they're getting the very best that they can, that they know what they're taking, and we do as well, to maximize their results. Our members can usually get rid of a significant number of things that they've been taking that they don't need to be taking at all because it's combined um, in the formulations and the, the products from Colton Nutrition. Colton Nutrition, like I said, is available um, at OsteoStrong Centers. If you're wanting to take a look at what you have in your cabinet or want to be buying you know, at your, the, the store you've always bought from, download the ABCS quiz, take it in and take a look and see um, so you can find what's good for you, what's going to work, and you don't waste your money. So that was a lot. I hope it was helpful for you guys. I hope it provided a little bit of clarity. But basically, four bullet points of everything we've talked about today, important things to remember, kind of the key takeaways, if you will. We talked about why bone health is so important to your overall health and wellness. It's where it has to start to keep you physically strong. We talked about signs and symptoms of bone loss and making sure that you have a plan in place to strengthen the foundation of your body, making sure that that is a priority. We talked about the three things it takes to build optimal bone density. First and foremost, the physical stimulus, the physical activity at a 4.2 multiples of body weight minimum. Number two are the four building blocks that we're gonna get through our food and supplementation to bridge the gaps in our diet. Both the workers, our osteoblast guys, and their materials have to show up to the construction site to build that foundation. Use the ABCS of optimal supplementation quiz or stop into an OsteoStrong member or, set or uh, uh, center or at your next session if you're a member, visit with one of your session coaches for more information. But at the end of the day, the information is great, but I want you to be able to take some action. I want you to, to, to have an idea of what you're gonna do with this information. So each of you probably noticed something different that caught your attention throughout this talk. But I'd like to leave today with at least one thing that you're gonna do as a result of this information. It could be to get an assessment of your bone health. Um, maybe osteoporosis or osteopenia is not something you've even ever you know, thought about. So ask your doctor about getting a DEXA scan if you've never had one. This is a great place to start. How about increasing your physical activity during the day? Um, any kind of increase is better than nothing. So weight bearing and high impact exercises are best for bone density and stretching exercises can help with pain and stiffness and flexibility, and just getting you more active. And of course, OsteoStrong is always an option as well. Maybe checking your typical diet um, for fruit and veggie diversity or good fats, or are you getting adequate protein? Um, monitoring your calcium intake that you're already getting through your food. Use the ABCS quiz um, that's being emailed to you to check your current supplements in your cabinet. But no matter what, if you have low bone density or you have osteoporosis, learn what you need to know about the options that are available to you. If you're an OsteoStrong member, talk with your session coach at your next session to learn more and help maximize your results. You're here every week and there's no reason not to have that conversation. If you're not an OsteoStrong member, consider scheduling a free um, first appointment to learn more. Come in and find out what we're, what we're all about, and meet some awesome people along the way. But most importantly, I just hope you understand the importance of making bone health a priority 
and taking some form of action. Please don't let age-related challenges or conditions like osteoporosis slow you down. Support your bones for a lifetime of health and wellness. And that's all I have heard. So we've covered a lot of material. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Yes, we have, Dr. Becky. Thank you so much. I want to give a, you know, our appreciation from the whole group here. Um, we're going to go into our Q&A section next. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to remind everybody of a couple things. If you're not sure where the nearest osteostrong is to you, please just visit www.osteostrong dot me slash locations and you can find a center near you. Um, also, uh, some of the participating centers uh, have a promotion on cult nutrition right now. And so here's two options for you. If you enroll as an OsteoStrong member, uh, you can receive a free cult nutrition sample pack and coupon for $10 off your first cult nutrition order of $50 or more. Uh, another option is if you just buy um, a cult nutrition sample pack, um, you can receive a $10 coupon towards your next order as well. So uh, it'd be basically free for you. Um, anyways, great job again today, Becky. Uh, I'm going to jump into a couple questions. And since we just talked about Colton a little bit, I'll start with this one first. Uh, Maureen had asked if uh, you could talk a little bit about what comes in the Colton sample pack and how we use that. Oh, sure. So what comes in the Colton sample pack I have my, my handy helper here, I guess. Perfect, so this is actually what a Calton Nutrition sample pack looks like. Calton Nutrition is um, both in liquid form and in capsule form, but it's split out, it's a multivitamin um, called Nutrients, and it's split out in two different doses to make sure that we're covering those um, competitions and synergies. So in the AM dose, or the, the first dose you take every day, everything is in there that complements each other. And in the second dose, everything's in there that complements each other. And it's a full spectrum multivitamin, multimineral, and multi-antioxidant. So between the two um, that you take in a day, you're covering virtually every um, vitamin, mineral, and antioxidant that you could potentially be um, missing in your diet. So it is a week's worth of um, multivitamin you get all of the different flavor combinations. And then um, Colton also has a capsule option. And again, the cap, there's AM capsules and PM capsules. So that's what comes in the sample pack. It's a week's worth of the multivitamin. So you can give it a chance, give it a try, see how it tastes. Or if you like the capsules better, that's an option as well. Thanks, Becky. If you want to stop your presentation. Oh, uh, yes, I apologize. You'll be able to see if you want to hold that box up for them again. You're holding the box up, but they probably couldn't see that yet. Um, so that was good. Um, so um, another question that he came in is OsteoStrong obviously selected Cult Nutrition as a product that we would have. And uh, they were wondering what the difference is in, in Cult Nutrition. So that is a question I could probably do a four hour presentation on. But the primary <laughs> awesome. difference um, with Colton, it's in, so Cult Nutrition is actually if you get online, Colton Nutrition has actually um, got its start in supporting bone health, primarily uh, because the founder of Colton um, suffered osteoporosis, severe osteoporosis and fractures in her early 30s, and was a very healthy, um, very, very active, very healthy, very nutritionally um, uh, aware and um, healthy eater, and yet she still had this disease. And so I dove into the science and the research and just um, realized that there was a, a, a really big gap and a lot of misinformation out there as far as supplementation and the role of it, and then also how it should be delivered and formulated, especially in regards to bone health. But the other thing that we know is that what's good for the bones is good for the rest of the body. And so Colton Nutrition has really kind of curbed the, the realm of bone health in their multivitamin and their um, omega-3 fatty acid supplement along with their protein D3 and K2. It's delivered very differently than the vast majority of um, supplementation. Most of their supplementation, their multivitamin and their um, omega-3 fatty acid, their, uh, their fish oil is split out into doses. So you take one in the morning and one in the evening and the reason for that is because of 
the almost 100% absorbability, if you're taking it in that formulation, the beneficial quantities and forms are, um, because it's almost 100% absorbed and there's virtually no waste, there's no extra. We have none of this 500% of vitamin A and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is the competitions and the synergies are 100% figured out for you. So everything, all minerals and vitamins and antioxidants that need to be combined together to optimize absorption and utilization are in the one dose. And then they're split out and the, the, the remaining is in the other dose. So especially with their multivitamin, um, the AM dose and the PM dose are two completely different formulations. So it's not like you're just taking 50% of your multivitamin in the morning and just taking the other 50%. They're totally different formulations. To make sure that that multivitamin you're taking is absorbed and utilized um, the way it's intended. Kind of very similar to, to, to food. So. Perfect. Good. Thank you so much for that additional detail. Um, let's see, a follow-up question to that was uh, about K2. And uh, we're talking more and more about K2 and bone health. And they wanted to know kind of when that came into the picture. Sure. So K2, um, so let's just start with, let's start with the basics. So vitamin K um, is actually a fat soluble vitamin. I think a lot of people know vitamin K um, as it's a, a very, it's incredibly antioxidant, but it also um, is involved in heart health and um, the thickness of our blood. So a lot of people who are heart patients who have a cardiac history um, are told to avoid vitamin K or foods containing vitamin K because it helps thin the blood. And so that's vitamin K one. So when you take vitamin K or eat it in foods, it's in a lot of um, dark green veggies and leafy veggies. So a lot of people who are on a blood thinner can't eat like broccoli and spinach and that kind of stuff because of the vitamin K that's in it. But when you consume uh, foods that are high in vitamin K, as soon as that hits the stomach, it's broken down. And then it's broken into two different forms. There's vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. And they serve two completely different functions in the human body. Vitamin K1 becomes our blood thinner. And it's a much easier form um, for the body to convert. Vitamin K2 is what becomes our taxi driver to deliver calcium out of our bloodstream and into our bone tissue. But to get the vitamin K2 form to convert in our digestive tract, vitamin K has to ferment. So it's a fermentation process, meaning you have to have really good, healthy gut bacteria in order to, for that process to happen. But because most people, and especially the older we get, have suboptimal um, gut health and a lot of issues with good bacteria, traditionally vitamin K is not, um, it's not very efficiently converted to K2. So if you eat a lot of calcium or you take a calcium supplement, you're lacking vitamin K2 conversion in the body. And so it gets stuck in your bloodstream and you end up with calcified arteries and that kind of stuff. So a lot of cardiologists will tell their patients to not take the calcium supplement, they're dangerous. But it's because they don't have K2 to get it out of the bloodstream and get it into the bones. So knowing this in the last probably five to 10 years, there is now K2 that is processed and fermented into MK4 and MK7. So you're gonna see that on any vitamin K. Um, you don't need to go into the, the details of that. You just know if you see that, it, those are, that's what you want. Um, but it's fermented into MK4 and MK7. You can take that so the body doesn't have to convert traditional vitamin K. You can take it um, all on its own, shelf stable. It needs to be suspended in fat um, or in oil because it's a fat soluble vitamin. But you can take that and then your calcium is automatically deposited into the bone tissue. So that's kind of the story on vitamin K2 in, um, in a nutshell. So. Very good. Thank you. I so appreciate that. Um, please just a reminder to keep yourself on mute so we don't have the background noise and use the chat room. Um, let's see. I got another question for you here. It's uh, how do you get all these supplements in if you can't take them with food and you can't take them with magnesium? What is the suggested schedule for taking the supplement? So um, I think that pertains a little bit to the Colton and uh, that would help to maybe kind of explain that if you can. Oh, sure. So really, um, we don't want you taking your vitamins with food because you're going to absorb the nutrients out of your food. Um, the body, like I said, you know, with calcium and most vitamins and minerals, the body can only absorb a certain amount of the time. 
But having said that, um, especially a very well formulated multivitamin that breaks down rapidly, whether it's in liquid form or just is um, in a, in a veggie, veggie capsule that's very easy to break down, because there's no actual true digestive process that has to happen, that's typically all absorbed into your bloodstream within about 20 to 30 minutes. So a really good formulated multivitamin, if you take that 20 to 30 minutes, either you know, before a meal, then, then you're good to go. So maybe you get up in the morning, you take your multivitamin, sit down and have your cup of coffee, and then you eat breakfast. Um, or, or the same thing at lunch. You know, as you're preparing your lunch, just make sure and take your multivitamin, heat up all your food, wait 20 to 30 minutes and take it that way. Or same thing, you know, before you go to bed at night. So it just need, we don't have to have hours and hours, you know, in between food and, and taking um, uh, supplementation. So I hope, did I answer that question to her? I hope I answered that right. Or I answered that completely. Yeah, I think you did. I have a follow-up that might be related. Um, the individual, uh, Maureen, wanted to know, they got a sample pack, and uh, how, how should they take this? How should they use the sample pack? So I know partly it's just so that you have the opportunity to try the different flavors and maybe the capsules with uh, Cult Nutrition, but uh, how should they really use it? Because I think it has the AM, PM part. So the AM, PM, there's actually, there's directions on there as well, but the AM and PM, you need to just take, you need to take the AM in like the first half of your day and the PM in the second half of your day. So those need to be taken 20 to 30 minutes before food. So a perfect schedule for that would be, like I said, just now, um, taking the AM, you know, with your first cup of coffee and then waiting just a little bit, 20 to 30 minutes to have breakfast. And then maybe mid-afternoon taking the PM or taking the PM right before you go to bed, um, just so that it's outside of a window of the body needing to digest a meal. And um, the thing with the sample pack, there's seven um, days worth of the multivitamin. But I think the thing that the vast majority of people notice right away and the difference in the formulation and how well the body absorbs that multivitamin multi-mineral formulation, most people just feel really good almost immediately. It's readily absorbed. It's all in the beneficial forms and quantities that the body naturally needs to be able to be absorbed and utilized. And so it's like eating just an incredibly healthy meal of nutrients every day in the morning and in the evening. And it's amazing because after those seven days, the vast majority of people just feel better and they have more energy and there's a very good um, formulation of magnesium in the PM dose. So people usually see, even after five to seven days, just a week, that they're sleeping better. So it's pretty amazing um, how quickly the body will actually start to feel better when it's fueled better. So I hope that Wait, answered the uh, question. Good. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Dick wanted to know what on the supplement label would help you identify how, how well the absorbability is. Yes. So Dick, I'm gonna really encourage you to download the ABCs quiz. Um, but one of the biggest challenges, so the absorbability is the number one key to supplementation. Because like I said, if you can't absorb it, then all the rest of it is just for not, it doesn't matter what's in it. So the biggest challenge with a lot of the stuff that's on the shelf right now are the binders and the fillers and the components that are added to supplements to make them shelf stable, the anti-caking agents and all of that stuff. So one of the, one of the things I think that is a hallmark that a lot of um, supplements will use are things like wax or um, BHT as a preservative and things of that nature that the body can't break down. So if you can't break it down, you can't absorb it. So looking at that, what's in that added ingredient, and there's a list of all the kind of words that you, the weird words that you need to look for on that ABCS of supplementation quiz so that you don't have to become a scientist to figure it out. Um, but quite frankly, I, I kind of always, even when I'm just shopping for food, if, if there's a whole bunch of words on there that I don't know what they mean, especially in the added ingredients, then chances are it's probably not good for me. You see, you know what I mean? But if that, you know, capsule is um, encapsulated with wax to make it more shelf stable. The body can't digest wax. Um, if there's BHT or other components like that um, that they use as a preservative to make sure that it's shelf stable, 
you know, we don't want to be taking that stuff with our the, the, with our health supplements. So use the ABCS of, of supplementation, but it's the binders and it's the fillers and that kind of stuff that are the, the biggest problems with um, supplementation that's out there. Good, good. Um, thank you for explaining that. Uh, we're getting kind of- In regards to absorbability, I should clarify. In regards to uh, the body being able to absorb them, so. Super, we're getting uh, close to, um, you know, we're, we're actually 15 minutes over, so we're getting yes. close to the end here. I, I'll take a couple, two last questions real quick if I can, and then we better move on so we can be respectful to your time. Um, let's see, the first one was um, uh, from somebody that wanted to know about uh, A1C and what OsteoStrong can do for your A1C level. Oh, sure. So OsteoStrong, I mean, obviously we strengthen the foundation of the body. Um, the skeletal structure. But again, we know that if the bones are strengthening, then we're able to um, strengthen our muscles, ligaments, and tendons as well. So not just the bones don't just get stronger, everything that attaches to the skeleton also gets stronger. And the way OsteoStrong works to strengthen muscles, because we're not doing traditional exercises, you know, weight bearing, OsteoStrong actually works in strengthening muscle tissue because we make the muscles more dense. We make the muscle tissue more tone and more firm and more dense. And the more dense muscles become, the more myofibrils or fibers are inside that muscle tissue. And those fibers are what um, allow muscles to uptake glucose from the bloodstream. So the more dense your muscle tissue is, the more muscle fibers there actually are the better the body is able to utilize the glucose um, and it also creates more insulin receptors. So the, the glucose is taken out of the bloodstream, lowering your A1C levels and your blood sugar and uh, making the body more efficient at processing that sugar. So that's how we help with type two diabetes. Uh, for somebody that has osteoporosis, what makes um, OsteoStrong safe and effective for them? So that's one of the biggest challenges because when you're compromised to the point where you have a diagnosis of osteoporosis, the very types of exercises, the high impact, high uh, weight bearing exercises start to become dangerous um, because the, the risk of fracture is a very real thing. So the foundation, the founder of OsteoStrong actually, the, um, our, our system was developed by a biomechanical engineer, and Dr. Jack Wish was his name, but he developed it um, only because he, his mom was diagnosed with osteoporosis. She has celiac disease, so she can't take it, couldn't take any of the medication. And so he just started researching, you know, exercises, like an exercise program, you know, to help his mom. And when he found the 4.2 multiples of body weight and you know, what, what the research was, was saying, that's when he started tinkering and came up with the spectrum circuit. But what makes it so safe um, are several things, but I'm just gonna cover the top two. First and foremost, the, the equipment here doesn't do anything to you you are 100% in control the entire time and the amount of pressure that you're able to generate is from your own muscular strength. And because we know the muscles will never outpower the skeleton, the likelihood of you being able to generate enough compressive force if you're in the proper form, position, um, to generate enough force to actually hurt yourself is very, very, very slim. So it's an incredibly unique just very, very powerful system that's incredibly safe for that very reason because you're totally in control of your own session every week when you come in. Then the other thing is you're always with the session coach to make sure that you maintain that form and make sure that you're doing the equipment properly every single week. So whether this is, you know, you've been with us for a week or you've been with us for five years, you're always with the session coach to have that second set of eyes. So it's just incredibly safe for people who are compromised with their bone density. Very good, Dr. Becky. Thank you so much for that explanation. And thank you for the wealth of knowledge you shared with us today. We appreciate you and uh, are just so happy to have this time with you. I want to go ahead and start to conclude by saying thank you to everybody that attended. And thank you for the great questions that you put out through the chat room. That really helps us kind of get through them more quickly. So we sure appreciate you using that uh, capability within the, the video call. Um, Lastly, I just want to say that uh, we're planning, um, uh, well, May is National Osteoporosis Awareness Month, right? So in May, on May 5th, we're going to have another talk 
that'll deep dive into some other areas. Um, I think we're going to call it Healthier Bones for Life. And again, that'll be May 5th. So thank you very much for uh, attending today. And remember, uh, if you've got more questions, you can reach out to your local center and you can find a center at www.osteostrong.me slash locations. Thanks so much, everybody, for attending. And thank you, Becky. Thank you very much. I hope it was helpful and I hope it um, provided some value and gave you guys some clarity and you know what your next action step is going to be. All right. Until next time, have a great day.